If you will turn to Jeremiah 8, begin at verse number 20. Amen. Uh, the Bible says some powerful stuff there. Hopefully you can have uh, some information from this text. And perhaps this morning somebody will just stop hearing the sermons and start actually allowing the sermons to empower their life. Man. There's some changes in your life. You yes. Start hearing the sermons. Yes. A lot of people hear sermons, but they never empower the sermon by actually challenging God His Word. Uh, and they're moving forward because if nobody else wants to go to heaven, I'll go to heaven by myself. Man. So I just made up my mind that, that, that I'm, if I got to go, I'll go by myself. Man. Amen. Because God's word is powerful. Yes. God's word is able to save us. And God's word is able to help us in this very hour. Uh, the text says, the text says in Jeremiah 8, verse 20, it says, The harvest, this is a scary thought for a moment because I read this, I had to read it two or three times, and I want you to see this in the text. But the text says, uh, uh, and, and for a hermeneutical construct, I want to talk to you about the first thing, the medication, and the second thing, the qualification, and then the last thing, the restoration, because the last verse says, the story. And I want to speak to you from uh, a subject matter of why aren't, why aren't, why aren't we healed? Why aren't we healed? Uh, why aren't we healed? And so the text says that the harvest, I want you to listen to this uh, because sometimes you miss your blessings. But the text says the harvest is what? Ended. The harvest is ended. It's past. The harvest is ended. The summer has passed. Uh, and then and then I thought about that for a minute because uh, there are a lot of folk that want to be blessed, but the harvest is ended. Mm. There's a lot of people that are at points in their life that uh, God's harvesting time has ended. And you miss it. Mm. Mm. That's scary. Amen. And, 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 and so it, it, it literally sets, it will set the tone for Jeremiah's next verse. Uh, and next question he asks is why aren't we saved? Uh, because the spiritual harvest uh, has not ended, but the question is. Uh, the stuff that, that the, the stuff in between those harvest times in between uh, uh, we missed it and and the summer's passed and that's the time that we have planted and we we planted our stuff and we expected a good yield to carry us through the winter because don't much grow in the winter uh, and we're expecting let me let me back up here uh, uh, all the jobs have hired and it's now about to be the Christmas season they're only seasonal jobs now. And, and, and you, you, you had from January when you made your New Year's resolution all the way till October to do something about your situation, but you kept playing around and the summer has ended. And now you, you, you face a, a dismal picture in front of you because it don't look like, amen, don't look like things going to work out for the rest of the year. Mm. And so the question is then why, why, are we, why are we not saved? Then he says that in verse 21, concerning Judah and Israel, for the hurt of my daughter, uh, the hurt of the daughter of my people, I am hurt. Uh, I'm hurt. Jeremiah says, I'm hurt because the people of God are hurt. Yes. I, I, it, it, I can't just walk around and say, well, I'm a prophet, and it doesn't matter. I'm a preacher, and it does not matter. I'm a teacher, it doesn't matter. But the people of God are in a hurt situation, and I'm hurt. And then Alvin. Uh, 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 rewrote the scripture and said that uh, 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 he said he asked am I black yes you are black you, 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 you're, you're black amen uh, and maybe what it says. if you had to ask it says I am black uh, from, the, from the status of not the color of skin uh, but in other words I'm depressed uh, I'm, 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 my heart is heavy Have you, has your heart ever been heavy Man, uh, my heart is heavy, and an astonishment. Now watch it. Astonishment has taken hold of me. Has gotten hold of me. I'm, I'm I'm looking at the condition of the people of God, and they're in an unsaved state, and I cannot be happy. I feel miserable, and I feel bad, and it seems like I can't do anything about it. Uh, and not only that, but I'm looking at the people of God, and I am reminded of uh, very quickly, if you if you allow me to stretch myself, but go back to my text, because 
uh, when, when two points go in two opposite directions, normally you have a split. But in verse number five of the text, you find the cause of the illness in the text. In verse number five, it says that why? The answer to your question, this people of Jerusalem, that done what? Slid in what? Back by what? A perpetual what? Backsliding. They hold fast to see. They do what? Refuse to return. Uh, and, and, and it's necessary to go back to verse number five in order to really understand a rhetorical question in verse 23. Because he says, is there any bum in where? Gilead. Gilead. In other words, he said, is, is there any help that can help folk who, in verse 5, are perpetually backslide. Is there, does the, can the church help people who don't want to be helped? Can, can the church, with all of its preachers and all of its teachers and all of the doctrine of Christ, assist people who, in some cases, don't even realize that they're sick or demand to instruct the, the, uh, or demand to follow their own course of action in the recuperation. He says that these people are continuously and they refuse to turn from their sins. Uh, and then he asks the next question, he says, uh, is there a doctor that can help them? And I'll be where you want me to be just in just a moment. Is there a doctor in the house? If there is medicine, mm -hmm. and if there is a doctor, yes. Why not then is the health of the daughter of my people restored? Good question. Uh, and so the text is whether or not it's the doctor or the medicine, or is it the people? Mm. Is it that the power of God no longer can save folk like it saved folk years ago? Well. Is it that God has reached the point that he's no longer all powerful, all mighty, and all knowing, and that now folk are just trapped in a world of sin, a continuous, perpetual lifestyle that they simply cannot get out of because the word of God can't reach them. And if that's the case, we're in trouble. But I stop by to tell you, it's not God. Mm. Amen. It's not yeah. God. Yeah. Uh, we have a doctor, praise God. Amen. Yeah. We have a good doctor. We have good medicine oh, that yeah. can reach everybody in here yes. if they want to be saved. Preach. But you got to want to be saved. Yeah. Uh, and and we've got to go back to the medicine that heal folk in the Old Testament and the New Testament that can heal us today and get off some of this medicine that can't help anybody. Yeah. Uh, say it ends for a moment. And, 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 and so let me just uh, uh, leave this with you very quickly. Uh, uh, in, in, in a health uh, magazine, uh, it, it was reported that in Health Wise Magazine, it was reported that over 180,000 people died in hospitals in the United States uh, uh, last year. Uh, which means that on average about 400 people get up in the morning, leave their house uh, in the evening, go to the hospital, and never come back again. Right. As a matter of fact, the report went on to tell us that, 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 that out of the 25 worst hospitals in the United States, uh, one of them is the prestigious uh, Ronald Reagan Memorial Hospital, which is simply found two hours up the road, down 805, which turns into the 5 and connects to the 405, at the UCLA Hospital, where it is ranked number 25th as the worst hospital in the United States. Now, I'm not telling you not to, to go to the doctor. I, I, I'm telling you that man's knowledge and man. Uh, is, is limited in uh, uh, being able to guarantee you wellness in all situations. And I'm telling you that sometimes the places that we go to get well are the places that, that help us remain ill. In Chicago, there is a hospital by the name of the Thor, uh, Thornsbury, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, the, 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 the Thor Thornsbury Hospital, Thornsbury Memorial Hospital. Uh, which uh, is ranked 
uh, has, has a rate of 12 times the uh, national rate for causing infection, meaning that you're likely to receive a staph infection or some type of uh, a bacterial attack when you're, when you're ill. And then there's the Roswell Community Hospital, uh, which has eight times the national uh, average in causing infection. And, 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 and Jeremiah is looking at the condition that it, it, that is not allowing uh, something that should be curable to be curable. And then he, he, he poses a question to the people of God and he says, is it the hospital or is it the people? Well, Is it, is it the doctors or is it the people? Uh, is, it, is it the power of God or, or is it the folk who refuse to listen to the power of God? Let me testify just for a moment. We have always had the best doctor that anyone could ever have. Amen. We have a doctor whose whose education uh, uh, is, is surpasses any education. We have a doctor who's cured only not disease that he could cure. You remember Matthew chapter 8? It was Dr. Jesus who cured leprosy, which no man could cure. Y'all remember that? Oh, yeah. He has an outstanding record. Now, I don't care what you're dealing with. If you simply go to the right place, yes. you'll get the right cure. Yes. Now, some of y'all look at me like y'all sick, like y'all have oh. got an ounce of spirit of God in you. Praise God. I got one smiling, and I ask like, like y'all got something that's uncurable, Man. but there is not a disease that God can't cure. There is not a problem that you're dealing with that God can't fix. There's not nothing that you're dealing with that's too big for God. Amen. So it cannot be God. Perhaps it might be the person who has the ailment that don't recognize that in order to get well, you need to follow the instructions of the doctor. Oh, and yeah. y'all say amen. amen. Uh, and, and if we follow the instructions, we'll get the healing. Uh, you remember it was only Jesus in Mark 9, verse number 29, that was able to clear lunacy. You oh. remember when the disciples came unto him and said, Master, why is it that we cannot uh, uh, get this demon out of this hand? He said, some only come through fasting and, and prayer. prayer. And Jesus said that you need to go practice your medicine because if you had faith like you supposed to have, you would be able to deliver for when they're ill. Uh, it is Dr. Jesus, the Bible says, in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, that he that is sent upon this world to help to bring healing. And I stop by to tell you, when folk are sick and uh -huh. the Spirit of God, yes. it is because they're not listening to the Spirit of God. Man. When you are connected with the Spirit of God, God's Word still is quick and powerful and is able to bless us and heal us. In fact, James said that we ought to receive His engrafted Word, which is able to build our souls. Yes, sir. Let me tell you something right now. Some of us are so sick, we're sitting in here receiving the word of God and we look at like he ain't talking to me but I'm talking to you oh, because yeah. you've been sick for a long time you've been lying for a long time and God know you've been lying for a long time you've been hateful for a long time you've been miserable for a long time you've been in the church for a long time and you still have not grown spiritually because you're still trapped by sin Y'all uh, not listen to me. You've been in church all your life, and you still some of the meanest folk I know in the whole world because you're not listening to Jesus. Somebody, oh, amen, anyhow. I said, you've been, you, you, you've been sick. Jeremiah says, why have you not gotten well? Why haven't you gotten your swagger back? Why haven't you gotten your joy back? Why is sin still dominating your life? You've heard enough sermons to now that when you hear sermons, it starts to come boring to you. Uh, you've heard that before. You will have to preach because I'm real, real sick. And if you're not really preaching, I can't even hear you. You've been sick a long time because you don't even have your attendance together yet. We don't know when you're coming to church, when you're not coming to church. You've been sick a long time because you still don't understand how giving ties into your relationship with God. You've been sick a long time because you refuse to accept that yes, God has put his church together. He has placed the people in the church together. They have a role in the church and they have a certain duties in the church that we ought to respect and appreciate. And you've been sick a long time. My concern is I'm hurt, I'm astonished because if you die in your sickness, if you die like that, if you die saying all I got to do is come to church when I want to. If you die saying all I got, you can't tell me nothing. If you die running your, if you die with that, if you die doing what you do behind the scenes, we are not saved. And so I want to talk to 
today about understanding that the, the text and understanding that, that we ought to receive the medication, the bomb that God has for every one of us. God has uh, the same power in the bomb and the bomb and the bomb represents the blood. The bomb is an ointment. The bomb, he said, is there any bomb in Gilead? I want to tell you right now, whatever you're dealing with, God has some bomb for you. Look at your neighbor and say, God got some bomb for me. Yeah, God got some bomb for me. If you not, you don't have joy in your heart right now, God got some bomb for you. If you, if you sit out feeling hopeless, God has the answer for you. The question is, when you receive the medicine, will you receive the medicine so it can save your and grant your soul? Amen. Amen. God, God has some bomb. Now watch this. His bomb. Now think about God's medicine is that it don't always look good. It don't always taste good. Okay. Amen. And, and maybe that's why some folk not, not taking the medicine. Uh, because, you know, when I was young, I had a grandma, and, and, and I had a mother, they, they, they passed this stuff down called Castro. And, 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 and for every time you got sick, no matter what it was, they brought out that Castro. And if you, if you were bad like me, they brought a Castro and a bell. Because you were going to swallow that Castro. Now, you tried a couple of times, they take out you. Move your mouth, turn your head, and spit it out, and, try to, and it's still leaking in your mouth. But 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 when that belt came behind you, that was the other medicine. That was the re that was the booster shot. Once once the booster shot came, you learned to, to drink your what? To drink your medicine. You learned to drink your medicine. And, and and perhaps perhaps the Jews and Jeremiah time when they heard God's voice and said, "Men, take it away from it." I can't I can't listen to that. Perhaps it was that the medicine. Uh, was too strong for them, but at the same time, it was good for them. I, 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 I want to pause for a moment that perhaps we have polluted and we have diluted the medicine of God to where the people of God can no longer get well. Perhaps the fact that we allow men to come on TV and radio and preach hour-long sermons and never address my sickness in the pew, that I get up and leave out of here in my sickness, not even affected by the medicine, because it was too strong, it has been diluted and polluted in Galatians chapter 1 and verse number 6, where the Bible says uh, that I'm all so soon, you're so soon removed from him that I call you to the gospel of Christ and to another gospel, which there is not another gospel, but there be some that will pervert the gospel of Christ. In other words, uh, there are times when folk will preach or uh, they, may, they may teach something that is less offensive to a person because they have declared they're too sick to receive the raw medicine that God has. God does not play. God says, no, don't do it, and God means don't do it. And we say, well, if they do it, don't say nothing about it, because folk won't come to church if you preach the truth like you're supposed to preach the truth. If you preach that lying and fornicating and stealing and robbing and being underhanded is bad, folk will shake their head. Let me tell you something. I'd rather get my medicine now. I'd rather get my medicine now than to get my medicine later. Because there are some sick folk from the pulpit to the pew that need that engrafted word of God, which is able to save their soul. The church used to preach against sin. Man. Now sin tells the church to shut up and yeah. preach a side wish. Oh. Where was? Where, where is the church? And let me just say it generically. No matter what church or where was the church? Where was these big names that held pulpits that can reach thousands of folk? in one swoop that have been in the White House right. on the, the, the Time Magazine page, Time Magazine uh, Man of the Year, that, have, that can aid, that's able to speak a word and the whole world will hear. When the vote was passed to change the definition of marriage, when the vote was passed that we would go away from God's word and begin to do something else, what were these big voices preaching God's word and saying what God word and said. I tell you, it was diluted. It was polluted. And it was stamped out. And it left folks sick. And Jeremiah, that's one of the reasons folk are dead. Not all are dying in their sin. It's because we are sad or afraid to preach against sin in the body of Christ. Yeah, yeah. And not only we have the combination of people who are afraid to preach against sin, you then have the boldness of the people that are in sin. Verse number five, uh, Jeremiah who will refuse to turn from sin because they've never been preached about sin. Amen. Why are 
people healed. People are not healed because somebody's been messing with the medication. But if you take the medicine that God gives you, if you receive that engrafted word that God gives you, it may not taste good, you may not like it, but it'll so be good for you. Y'all like say amen. The Bible says in Luke 8, verse 43, that his blood, his blood, his word is so powerful that it was able to heal disease and nobody else could heal. I want you to talk to people right now. You're going through something. Your mama can help you. Your dad can help you. Your sisters can help you. And that is, that's a lack of spirituality. You've been coming to church, playing church all your life, sitting with your head down, looking around, no Bible, frowning up, just, I, in, just in your own world. Let me tell you, that is a called spiritual uh, uh, lack of originality, if you will. That's when you can actually walk in the house of God and not even be connected with the spirit of God and all your life you had this issue with not being connected with the spirit of God and all your life you've been playing leaving the church house, going back in the world doing what you want to do, the medicine has been shot out but you won't take the medicine but let me tell you something you spent time and money and years like this lady in the text uh, with issues with doctor after doctor quack after quack and yet you're still in the same position that you in no glory, no praise And that she simply touched the hem of his woman. God is number one in home remedies. He may not use Castro, but his medication, home remedies, that he uses spit. Now I know some of y'all found, I told you, you're not, you're not going to understand this for a minute. He uses spit. Watch this. Uh, the, 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 the word blum, contextually, has to do with uh, 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 the uh, liquid like substance. Uh, a, 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 an embrocation or a cream or a salve that's for a covering uh, of an illness or a wound that's able to lower temperature, they're able to, to put salve on and bring wellness. Isn't it funny that we are, we're covered in the blood of Christ? Uh, and, and we see a type of antitype that's pointing to God's way of covering our illnesses, and that is through his spiritual blood. And Jesus pointed this out as we travel through the Gospels. We'll find that it's Jesus in Mark 7, verse number 35, that Jesus uh, in his home remedy would spit on a person in order to get them well. Now, somebody lose your name. If you know why Jesus was spit, raise your hand. You, if you know why Jesus, you know the reason Jesus was spit, raise your hand. And you know because I showed you. <laughs> it it, it, it sounds horrible. It sounds uh, nasty, if you will. But the text says that there was a man who was deaf, could not speak. Straightway Jesus spit in the mud, made his own salve, his own blood, put it on him. And the Bible says straightway he began to what? Hear. And the strings of his tongues were what? Loose. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that there's something about the medicine of Jesus that can be inexplainable. But I bet you he's not complaining about being spit on. Amen. He's glad Amen. to be well and right about it. Uh -huh. Stay with me now. We're going somewhere. And you might not like the lesson that the preacher is spitting out. But if it helps you get away, Amen. you ought to say thank you, Jesus, Amen. for the spit Amen. that's getting on you. Can I spit on you just for a moment? Uh -huh. And you ought to be glad uh -huh, that we look at uh, Mark 8 and verse 43. That once again we'll find, a, a verse 23, that once again we'll find Jesus spitting on a man. He takes him out of the city. He takes him to a private location. He begins to spit on him. And the Bible says that he asks him, now can you see? Well, preacher, what does this mean? In Jewish culture, when uh, it was believed that the Messiah would come, is that he would heal all men of diseases with his spit. Uh, and so when he spit on these people, he was not just spitting on them for medicinal purposes, but he was spitting on them as a sign that he was and he is the Son of God. And that's why he would tell them, uh, when I get through spitting on you, don't go tell nobody just yet because my time is not up. You see, uh, what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that if we'll receive the Spirit, God's getting ready to reveal Himself in your life. Yeah. Am I right about it? Uh, and we'll just wake up on Sunday morning and receive the 
the word of God. God's getting ready to build up something in your life that's been tearing you down all of your life. And we'll just receive the word of God and let it run all over us. When we were blind, we'll be able to see again. And we'll just receive the medication that God had. We'll no longer be able to sit in the house of God and act like we could have had a V8. Am I right about it? When we receive the word of God, we'll no longer be able to just come in here and act like it's just another walk in the park. Because I understand that there's power in the word of God. Am I right about it? It may not get you well today. It may not be your time for the harvest is past and summer's ended. But God may be ready to do a thing in somebody's life. And for that, everybody ought to be saying,